grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. But instead of me welcoming you, I want to just take a moment and have us all sit in silence. I want us to have the waves welcome us. I want us to have the wind in the trees welcome us. And just appreciate the beauty of the space that we're in today. cottage traffic in it. <laughs> I'd like to invite Clayton to lead us in our territorial acknowledgement. Good morning everyone and welcome to camp. It's good to see you again. It's been too long. We here are gathered in a place that people have come literally to this exact space for the past 87 years under the name Camp Manesetung to worship. And we wish to acknowledge that there have been people living on this land for thousands of years. Camp Manesetung is not an English word. Manesetung is a Chippewa word, and it means laughing waters, in reference to la water that you could hear before you see it, perhaps as we can hear this morning. The people who have lived here for thousands of years we wish to acknowledge that the relationship with the land was central to their relationship with the earth and with nature. And we wish to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 29. We are treaty people, and we wish to acknowledge and recognize that we will care for this land and we will seek reconciliation for injustice of the past and present. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Clayton. And as we prepare our hearts and minds for fellowship and worship, let us uplift that identity which binds us all together today, that identity of being siblings in Christ. In that spirit, we light our Christ candle. God in our midst as loving parent, devoted son, and imminent spirit, a relationship ever sure and ever new. To celebrate God's presence with us and the importance of fire in our camping ministries and our enjoyment of nature, let's join together in a round of fires burning. Split it. We'll sing it once together and then we'll split down the middle so Gene's on this side, David and everyone on this side following me. Gene and everyone else follow Katie. Fires burning, fires burning, drawn Fire's burning, fire's burning, draw near, draw near, in the gloaming, in the 
Friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to give a wave, give a peace sign, whatever gesture you want to greet one another in Christ's name today. Make sure we get the folks back there. Good morning. <laughs> Friends, don't put away your singing voices quite yet for our call to worship. We'll join in a rousing rendition of He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. Yeah. Yeah. All righty, here we go. <laughs> he's got the whole world. Take it on the road. And we'll continue with our hymn found on your lyric sheet, Voices United 296. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> this is God's Wondrous World. join together in our prayer of approach. God of glory and care, we come to this place of nature and fun seeking rejuvenation. Lighten these hearts here that are heavy with worry and pain. Enlighten these minds here that are curious and seeking the Spirit's creativity. Enliven these hands here that are eager for times of rest and times of reconciliation. Raise our voices in song and our souls in prayer. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, 
who heals and brings together. Amen. You notice there's quite a bit of orange here in the congregation today. I admit I normally don't wear orange. It doesn't work with my coloring too well. But there's a couple reasons why we wear orange today. The first of which is to celebrate the season of creation, which we are in the midst of as a church. It goes from Labor Day to Thanksgiving weekend. And the color orange has a deep tradition in our Christian heritage. Orange was worn by early Christian confessors and monastics, those who spent their entire lives devoted to God. And there's a history of orange in the church being a symbol of endurance and strength. The orange of the flame and the Christ candle lights our hearts and gives us the strength to move on. It's also a color we find in nature. We find it in our trees. We find it in our harvest time. It's a stimulating color. It's one that brings to mind things that we ought to remember. And that leads us to the second reason why we wear orange today. And that is in recognition of Orange Shirt Day, as well as the day we'll know going forward as the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, which is happening this Thursday. This day honors the lost children and the survivors of residential schools, their families and communities. Public commemoration of the tragic and painful history and ongoing impacts of residential schools is a vital component of this reconciliation process. And Orange Shirt Day associated with it is an Indigenous-led grassroots commemorative day that honors the children who survived these residential schools and remembers those who did not. This day relates to the experience of Phyllis Webstad, a Northern Shoshwap Indigenous child, on her first day of school when she arrived in a brand new orange shirt, which was taken from her. It's now a symbol of the stripping away of culture, freedom and self-esteem experienced by Indigenous children over generations. So on this day and on September 30th, we encourage everyone to wear orange to raise awareness of the very tragic les legacy of residential schools, to honor the thousands of survivors and to remind us of our commitment to reconciliation. In the spirit of reconciliation and healing, these, that is the lens in which we hear our scripture readings today. Our first scripture reading today comes from the letter of James, chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. You might find these words familiar in a pastoral setting, giving comfort to those who need healing. Is anyone among you sick or in trouble? they should pray. Is anyone happy? They should sing praises. Is there anyone who is sick? They should send for the church elders who will pray for them and rub olive oil on them in the name of the Lord. This prayer made in faith will heal the sick person. The Lord will restore them to health and the sins they have committed will be forgiven. So then confess to one another and pray for one another so that you will be healed. The prayer of a good person has a powerful effect. Elijah was the same kind of person as we are, and he prayed earnestly that there would be no rain and no rain fell on the land for three and a half years. Once again, he prayed and the sky poured out its rain and the earth produced its crops. My siblings, if one of you wanders away from the truth and another one brings them back again, remember this. Whoever turns someone back from their wrong way will save their soul from death and bring about the forgiveness of many. Our psalm for today is Psalm 124. This is a responsive psalm that you'll find in your lyric sheet. Marilyn will play the refrain once. I'll sing it once. We'll all sing it together and then go ahead with the reading. Of 
If God had not been at our side, now, now let, let Israel, Israel say, If God had not been at our side when mortals rose up against us, then, then they, they would have swallowed us alive when, when their fury was roused against us. Then the flood would have swept us away and the torrent would have covered us. Then and the, the raging, raging waters would have gone right over our heads. But praise be God, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the hunter's snare. The snare is broken and we are free. Our help comes from God, the maker of heaven and earth. Our final scripture reading is another one that might be familiar to you. One of the more famous passages in Mark. In this passage, the disciples are seeing something that they think isn't quite appropriate. And as per usual, Jesus has a different answer for them than they were anticipating. John said to Jesus, teacher, we saw a man who was driving out demons in your name. And we told him to stop because he does not belong to our group. Do not try to stop him, Jesus told them, because no one who performs a miracle in my name will be able soon afterward to say evil things about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. I assure you that anyone who gives you a drink of water because you belong to me will certainly receive their award. If anyone should cause one of these little ones to lose their faith in me, it would be better for that person to have a large millstone tied around their neck and be thrown away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We continue with our next hymn, found on your lyric sheet, Voices United 570, Jesus' Hands Were Kind Hands. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture readings for today don't seem to naturally fit into the camp mentality. Words about overcoming enemies, anointing and illnesses millstones hung around necks. Not exactly the light reading you might expect sitting on the dock with your feet dangling above the water. It sounds more like the scary story set around a campfire than anything else. But they're reminding us about the struggles and pains of life, the things that weigh heavy on our hearts. 
And we might think, who would want to think of such things in the midst of this beauty in nature, in the beauty of this loving community and friendship? But perhaps that's exactly the reason why we should look at these things on this day when we celebrate our camping ministries. For these ministries and many camping experiences don't remove us from the world, but can allow those who might need healing to face the world anew with their loving God upon leaving the cabins and the camp. The camping experience is a time of Sabbath rest and Sabbath play, offering wholeness and healing in sometimes unexpected ways. In a cabin full of friends, we can find a whole host of ways that people are reconciling and healing within themselves and with one another prompted on by the spirit. You can imagine, you can imagine the most curious out of the bunch going around with the same fervor as James, asking, are any among you sick? Are any joyful, are any suffering? And you might think them a nosy neighbor, but in fact, James is simply checking in and helping us realize the value and importance of our Sabbath rest. So are any among you joyful? Then camp can be a time to reflect and lean into the joys that God is inspiring in your lives. Such joyful moments and celebration of God's loving joy can be found right here at Camp Manesaton. Certainly there are many mo moments to sing joyful songs here and find plenty of time for play and to simply unwind for a bit if need be. And I'm sure Clayton and Mary here can talk about the camp far better than I can. For both the kids and the volunteers here, and many of you here today have your own experiences of this camp, either yourselves or your kids or your grandkids attending here. And perhaps you didn't see the joy on their faces right away when you picked them up because they were just sad to leave here. And those joys weren't just in the silly campfire skits or dinner songs. The joy from camping ministry such as this sings out in their entire lives long beyond the final campfire. The greater joys can come ahead. The joys of lessons, skills, and assurance gained from these, these ministries. Some of God's beloved children here find new pastimes and passions that they wouldn't have experienced otherwise, or opportunities to better understand God's great creation. The friends made here are also a true joy and blessing, offering wholeness, friends to assist when we come upon those stumbling blocks of life. And more than anything else, it's the love and compassion that is encouraged at camps such as this one that can provide the greatest opportunities for healing, even for those singing with joy right now. To be able to ask the bigger questions to wonder aloud and wonder anew, that can give the kids a broader and deeper faith and strength to draw upon in those rougher times. It can help mold these kids into the kinds of people that are not at risk of needing the millstone, as Jesus suggests. Are any among you suffering? On a day like today, we're also aware that Many children do not get to enjoy the joys and security that so many of us have taken for granted. We're painfully aware of what many in the United Church are honoring as Orange Shirt Sunday, recognizing the many children who did not leave their homes to go to a place where they could discover themselves. Quite the opposite, they were stripped of their culture and identity. There was great suffering and humiliation, loss of feeling loved, and in far too many cases, as we as a nation have been reckoning with this year, loss of life. We look around here and see a great diversity, a great varied number of trees and plants and mushrooms, 
the wonderfully interconnected and varied creation. But we have to reckon with the reality that our ministries in the past did not reflect or appreciate such diversity in our midst. Like the disciples we had and sometimes still have issues with people doing things in other ways, ways that are confusing to us or unknown to us. Part of the healing and reconciling journey for us all is to take seriously the call of Jesus to respect the diversity and goodness in our midst and to continue to educate and keep accountable the ways in which we understand and live out God's love. And for those who have been impacted by the residential school system, healing comes slowly, but there are opportunities for healing. And one such example of that can be found in a camping experience in Camp Suzuki Howe Sound, located just north of Vancouver on Gambier Island on what is traditionally Squamish First Nation territory. At this camp, Children are taught language lessons in their mother's Squamish tongue, a language which had been suppressed for generations. They're taught traditional teachings from their culture. They engage with the creation around them and take part in traditional dances. In all of this, generosity, affirmation, and connection with elders in their communities are uplifted and nurtured. This is the type of healing that is also affirmed in our faith the healing that provides wholeness and connection. In the healing ministries of Jesus, we find not, all, not just the curing of ailments, but a real emphasis on bringing people together and supporting them. And that is still the impulse of God today, which we follow. Are any among you sick? For the ministries of camping can provide not only wholeness on a cultural or a generational level, but also for an individual child of God who feels ill or lost. The community and the time of Sabbath rest to search and pray can provide some really healing and fulfilling experiences. We hear of God traveling with us in our life's journey, navigating us through the valleys and helping us to avoid the snares and the torrents and the floods where they can be avoided. But God also provides nurturing and healing in those quieter Sabbath moments, those times of rest or just being away from it for a bit. Perhaps you have your own camping experiences that upon reflection you found to be a healing experience when you stumbled upon the spirit in the woods or when the ministry and grace found in Christ was made clearer by a new friend met over the campfire, when you were able to find joy and confidence in things again, or at least the promising hope that they could be found again in God. I don't claim to be the best, uh, most experienced camper myself. I'm not the best outdoorsman. And growing up on the farm, sometimes the fields took precedent over going out into the forest. But the experience that I've had at camp, as limited as they had been, have been extremely uplifting and at many times healing. I'll share one healing experience. It was an integrated arts camp in high school where I found myself confident enough in myself and confident enough finally in my relationship with God to express myself and come out to a large group of people, whereas before it had only really been known amongst my really close friend group. I sang about it, which feels a little bit silly years later, but the support given as appreciation for my honesty was a huge experience of inclusion and wholeness to me. It was a camp experience that I've carried with me into my whole understanding of ministry. The support of the group gathered is just as James describes, the healing and wholeness felt amongst a group of people. 
gather the elders, gather the ones with oil so that all might fully appreciate God in our midst and heal as one. So on this day, may our congregations continue to support our camping ministry here at Manesaton. And may we continue to seek <laughs> God's healing presence in our times of Sabbath rest and play, whether it be in a natural setting like this or in the daily rounds of our lives. Take delight in the joyful times of campfire refrains and finding peace in creation. Take heart in those more difficult times, which require prayer and community. And take comfort and hope in the promise of healing and wholeness that we find in our loving God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, as we recognize the opportunity for healing and joy found in this setting today, we recognize the need for such healing and seeking of joy. In that spirit, with the spirit, I ask you to join with me in our prayer of confession and renewal. Let us pray. Caring God, we are in need of some healing and renewing today. Sometimes we find ourselves as stumbling blocks for others. Sometimes we cannot admit we rely on you and others. Sometimes we feel too tired, weak, and worn out to live our faith. In Sabbath rest and in our actions, Lord, transform us anew. For these and other transgressions, have mercy upon us and renew us. take comfort. For in our times of weariness and need of healing and the times when we step on each other's healing journeys and on the long healing journey of reconciliation, God is good and God is with us. In the grace we find through Christ, we find accountability, connection, and restoration. May we find compassion and healing in God's working in us today. Amen. We continue with our next hymn found on your lyric sheet, Voices United 374, Come and Find the Quiet Center.
Just a couple of announcements for our congregations today. Firstly, I want to thank those who helped out with the Blythe UCW lunch and dinner this past Thursday. Um, I know many people were missing the meals that we put on, so it was great to offer it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, also a reminder that this coming Wednesday is the Brussels board meeting. That's at seven o'clock at the church. And starting next Sunday, Barring any further restrictions or other things going on, we will be inside our sanctuaries fully. Uh, next Sunday is World Communion Sunday. We'll be celebrating the Sacrament of Communion together. So we look forward to seeing you in our buildings next Sunday. Are there any other announcements or celebrations that the congregation should know about today? I'll say a celebration. It's Jean-Luc's birthday on Saturday. Uh, <laughs> Happy birthday. It will be this coming Saturday. Happy birthday to you. Any other announcements? As we celebrate healing and connection that we find in our congregations, we uplift the discipleship in many ways in which that happens. In that spirit, our offering will now be received. all of our efforts as communities of faith are supported by the discipleship and offering as given in God's grace. May all that we offer in our time, our talents, our treasures, and otherwise be blessed by God and do good in God's world. Amen. Friends, let us join in a spirit of prayer for our prayers of the people. Let us pray. Almighty God, your prophets, your Son, and your Spirit, encourage prayer and relationship with you during times of wilderness and times of wonder. Lord, open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to the needs of those around us. We bring to you our prayers for those who we and you care for deeply. In all of this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, great spirit, whose compassion has been known in our lives more times than we can count, we open ourselves to the needs of this world. 
As we prepare for the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, we acknowledge the great injustices perpetrated against those who lived on and cared for this land long before our ancestors arrived. We pray that with compassion and determination, we will continue to make ourselves aware of the impact of residential schools, the 60s scoop, and the suppression of Indigenous culture and tradition. Creator God, Great Spirit, you call us to relationships rooted in equality and respect. This day we covenant to be more aware of the racism that the Indigenous, Métis, and Inuit people of this country experience. We commit ourselves to raise our voices when we hear prejudiced comments, to guide others in the sacred direction of celebrating diversity that is your gift to us. Creator God, Great Spirit, in the quiet of our hearts and through the witness of our beings, we pray thanks for your accompaniment on the journey towards wisdom and understanding. Let us who are the church stand in solidarity and truth to Jesus' call to reconcile with our siblings taking to heart the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. In all of this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you are so good to us. We offer our prayers of thanksgiving for all the blessings revealed to us through Christian camping and outdoor ministries, for the gifts of your good creation which we encounter when we are camping, for forests and fields, beaches, streams and lakes, sunrises and sunsets, wind and rain, for all of this we give you thanks. For your gift of time and the cycle of nature, for opportunities in the outdoors to reflect and to feel your presence very near to us, and for rest and recreation we give you thanks. For the dedication of countless people who have supported this ministry through offerings of time and talent, builders, counselors and instructors, for the gifts of all who create and maintain an environment of faithfulness and healing through their example at camp. We give you thanks, O oh God. For the blessings you make known to us through those who participate at camp, for the questions and discoveries, for the friendships and fun, for the music and stories, we give you thanks, O oh God. For all of this in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now in a moment, we gather up in prayer those who are on our hearts for particular reasons today, either spoken aloud or in silent prayer, knowing that all is heard by you, loving God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue our prayers in the words so lovingly taught by your risen son, who exemplified relationship with you, loving God, as a mother loves her child, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn you'll find on your lyric sheets, Voices United 577, I've Got Peace Like a River. I've got 
celebrate wherever God's name is honored. When suffering comes, pray in faith. In times of joy, sing songs of praise. Persevere in prayer and action to bring others back to the truth. And may God save you from all that would harm you. May Christ Jesus heal you and raise you up. And may the Holy Spirit anoint you and give you peace with one another. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>